Hey everyone, um, couldn't make a vlog yesterday because I was sick, but today I'm all better, so I'm going to tell you in this video how the CRC News engine works. Um, if I go too fast or forget to mention anything, just ask in the comments below and I will answer your questions there. So here's a screen with a basic view of its input processing and output. As you can see, at the moment there are about 30 RSS feeds uh, that are automatically scanned. Besides the RSS feeds, there are, there's also a PHP web form um, for manually adding articles to the news engine. During processing of an article, the next couple of things will happen. There is going to be a language detection. Um, there is going to be some tagging, finding locations, determining the category in which an article belongs to and suggestions for geotags that aren't already in the system. The output uh, of all this goes to a newsletter, of course, an RSS feed. Um, I'm using Twitter feed to uh, distribute the articles uh, from the RSS feed to Twitter and Facebook. And all the articles are uh, stored in a MySQL database. So now let's have a better look at um, the system. Cue the movie. As you can see, the news engine has two main scripts, the input script and the newsletter script. Both run via CronJob. For those who don't know uh, what Cron is, CronJob is, um, Cron is a, a scheduler to, uh, in Unix uh, to schedule tasks on a certain time or day, etc. The input script runs every three hours and the newsletter script runs at the end of the day. The input script has three tasks. The first one is to start the RSS input script and fetch new RSS entries. Second, it checks if there are manual ed entries added via the PHP web form. And last, it uh, starts the processing script for all the new entries. The processing script does the following things. First, it determines the language of an article. At this point, only if it's Dutch or English. Second, it scans the article's contents to determine which tags belong to that article. So if an article is about malware, it gets the tags of cybercrime and malware. The third thing the script does, it scans the article's contents again, but this time for geotags to determine the location. This means that if an, ar if an article is about Google, it gets the location of the Google headquarters and is plotted on Google Maps on the Google headquarters location. If it's about Microsoft, it gets the Microsoft headquarters location and is plotted at, in Google Maps at the Microsoft headquarters location. After that, the fourth thing that the script does is it generates an entry for the GeoRSS feed. The fifth thing that uh, the script will do is that it generates an entry for the newsletter. But before it generates that entry, it first determines if um, the article is in Dutch or English, the language at this point. And we have determined that in this first step. And after that, if, if it knows what language is used, it uses the patterns for that language to scan the article's contents for geo suggestions. So after that, it checks in what category of the news article it belongs to and adds that to that category. For example, if it's an English article, it gets added uh, to the English part of the newsletter and then the category, for example, cybercrime or data breach and identity theft. Depends on the contents, of course. The sixth thing the script does is if um, suggestions, few suggestions have, found, have been found, um, then the system will email that to me so I can um, look at them and determine if I want to add that to the uh, geolocations definitions. The last thing that the script does, it adds all the entries to the geo RSS feed. 
so the GeoRSS feed is updated every three hours. The other main script uh, that, you have, that you can see in this picture is the newsletter script. This script does the following things. First, it counts all the articles per category. Second, it writes those statistics to the MySQL database. So the graphs on the website you see, you, um, see are loaded from the MySQL database. Third, it adds the HTML closures to the body of the generated newsletter so that all the appropriate HTML tags are closed appropriately. Fourth, it sends the generated newsletter to Mailman for distribution. And last, um, it archives a copy of the generated newsletter. So you always have an archive. Now an overview of the um, news software for the complete news engine. At the moment I'm using a Raspberry Pi um, to run all the new scripts. So Raspbian is used as an operating system, which is based on the operating system called Debian. The web server on the Pi runs Apache, PHP and MySQL and are all the latest versions available. For the new scripts I used the next couple of things. W3M, a text-based web browser. Uh, and I'm using this to get uh, the articles via RSS, so the, all the articles content um, is retrieved by W3M. WGET, this is a used to get files via HTTP, FTP, etc. Um, and I'm using this to uh, communicate with the Google API and get coordinates for addresses in my definitions library. The third one is called QDCAT and it's a program that can be used in Unix to uh, generate screenshots of websites. The fourth one is XVFB. XVFB is used to run virtual displays in the Unix world and it's used that this, uh, it's necessary to run QDCAT to make the screenshots. The fifth one is called Parkmail. Parkmail is a mail delivery agent. I'm using that to filter email coming to my mail server. By using Procmail I can send new geo definitions to my mail server, Procmail processes it and adds uh, the new added geo definitions to my libraries. The sixth one is called Postfix and of course Unix mail, uh, mail server and the mail uh, uh, delivery agent. And last but not least I'm using Mailman of Mailman you want to call it is used and it's used for distribution via mailing list of the newsletter so people can subscribe unsubscribe to a newsletter and get it mailman is used to do that so now you have a bit of an overview of how the current version of the news engine works again if you have questions leave them in the comments or ask on twitter i'm going to migrate the new scripts to the test environment um, so tomorrow i will make a video about how I installed the scripts. So that's it for today. Bye bye.